But yeah, let's uh let's enable all of these. I'll take that off. Let's go with that. Bus, bus. So some of this is redundant. What I usually do is send all of my guitars to one thing. No, sorry, what do I do? I usually send, like I have all these things grouped in folders. And then let's see, like here I have three background vocals. I'll send that to a background vocals group. So I can process all of the background vocals uh, in one thing. And then I'll have uh, lead vocals. I'll send that to a group. And then these groups get sent to a vocal group. So <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit redundant. Especially when I only have, let's see, like one guitar and one piano being sent to one guitar, one piano, and then being sent to a pianos and a guitars. It's just because of the way that I have presets made and I just left it like this. So just kind of ignore that <laughs> basically. Okay. So all those bus things are turned on now. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear the difference and I'm not going to take those off and a B it, but I'll play it here. Actually, I think there is a way to AB it. Let's see if this works. I bypass this in my mind. This might just be bypassing this one plugin that's on the two bus, or it could be bypassing all of the bus NLSs, or it could be bypassing all of the NLS. I'm not quite sure. I have to figure that out. But I think if you listen really closely, you can kind of hear the difference. It's not much, and it's probably just because I have this drive up by one that you can hear any kind of difference it's just because of this drive um but anywho so there's that that gives me a little bit more analog sound uh then all of these drum stuff here are getting sent to the drum group and with that i'm using the api So there is a little bit of a volume jump that you can hear, but I think this thing is giving it a little bit more punch and just a little bit more of that compressed sound, which is good. That's what I was going for. And then I also have the Kramer tape because that usually sounds good on drums. And in this case, I kind of liked it. Uh, You can definitely hear the kick and the snare, the saturation is kind of pushing the frequencies up to a little bit higher in the frequency range. So in earbuds you would be able to hear the drums better and laptop speakers because this is creating saturation and higher harmonics are being uh, introduced. So 
listen to the kick and snare and the hats. They're kind of being affected quite a bit. Um, and it, it was good. I liked it. It sounded pleasant. So I went with that. The bass guitar needed some more stuff. And because these two bass, the DI and the amp, I'm summing them together down into kind of one thing. I didn't want to do any compression or anything on here. Uh, all I wanted to do was do some good sculpting EQ so that the two uh, bass mics meshed well together. And I did all my surgical stuff that I needed to fit with the kick drum. And that got sent to my bass group, which then I did uh, compression, then EQ, and then some Kramer tape to add some saturation. So a little bit of compression, not much. But this VC76 uh, compressor adds like a little bit of analog character, which is nice. And then... Uh, quite harsh EQ. Kind of a heavy high pass um, and some mid and high scoop stuff. And then the Kramer tape is again adding that saturation with uh, higher harmonics being introduced. So you can hear it better with uh, laptop speakers and earbuds. It also just kind of helps cut through the mix a little bit more. It kind of makes like a, it shapes it down the middle a little bit better or something. I don't know. seems to cut through the mix a little bit better and sounds pleasant. And then I also have the kick drum uh, sending to this compressor. So it's triggering the compressor on the bass guitar. <laughs> Just a little bit of side chain compression. Nothing crazy. Now the guitars, they weren't, they weren't fitting in the mix quite well. Like everything was down the center and I felt that the guitar and the piano could be spaced. So I tried a few different things. Might be a little too much, but without it, it's kind of boring. But I can bet you if you don't, you wish you could pick up this micro shift. Kind of adds some chorus effect. That I wasn't really going for. So this super tab, this trick here, you have the dry signal far left and the wet signal, which is the second signal, is eight milliseconds uh, delay and far right, hard panned right. That creates that spaced effect. And this is clean. This is nice and clean versus the micro shift, which kind of makes this chorus effect, which I didn't want. Uh, so that spaced it out, which was quite nice. Feels a lot less boring. Uh, and then the piano, I did very similar thing. But this, this one, I did use the, the uh, the micro shift because, the whatever chorus stuff that was happening, sounded quite good. 
And when I used the exact same setting for the guitar and the piano, they were doing the same thing and it just was cluttering more. So with the micro shift, it sounded better. So the piano, I did a little bit more EQing, just plus two here and plus two right there. Just to brighten it a little bit. Kind of brought it forward as well, more forward in the mix. Um, but yeah, they were still just too too centered. So this plugin kind of opens it up just a little bit, but like I said, when I tried to space the pianos using the same trick as the guitar, they were just cluttered. They were doing, they're doing kind of a similar rhythm and hitting similar notes. So when they're spaced in the same area, it's kind of just blah, 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 not complementing each other very well. So with the piano sitting a little bit more center, with that space kind of what like 45 degrees whatever or 50 50 on either side and then the guitars hard panned it was sounding quite good so Now, there's also stuff going on in the vocals. Baby, don't say goodbye. Baby, slow. A lot of drum bleed. So I ended up putting on a very slow, or quite slow, not very slow attack, but slow release uh, gate. And that helped it kind of shave off just a little bit of that background noise whenever there was lots of um lots of pauses in the vocals so i did that for the main vocals and for the background vocals and that kind of cleaned up the whole kind of the song quite a bit it was very noticeable so i kept it and then background vocals were right in line with the lead vocals and I tried panning each one individually but they're all doing something different and it was distracting when they were panned differently so I kept them all down the center and then I used the micro shift to pan them to the to the far sides <laughs> With this introducing a chorus effect, it worked quite good. Slow down, baby. You can kind of almost not really hear a chorus effect. Uh, there's three vocals, and just bare vocals will have a kind of chorus effect, just by the nature of three signals being put together. Um, yeah, so that worked pretty nice, and that is that.